So this is a response to an article that was written by Social Media Examiner about a month ago from recording this. I think it's 4th of July. This is the 6th of August. So at first I was angry about this article. The article is called Death of Google Search Traffic and What It Means for Marketers. So if you just search for the Death of Google Search Traffic, you should find it. It's on the Social Media Examiner website. I was first angry about this article, um, not because it goes against my opinion, but there was people that I know that were reading it and starting to make decisions on this content, right? They were sort of reading it and then thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do about this? This is a big deal type of thing. But the reality is is that it's not a big deal and it's stuff that's been happening for a very long time. In fact, since Google's inception, um, they've been making changes ever since. So it's like, it's not news. It's not new. It's just the way that it is. So the the problem with the article, I've got a few problems with the art, article, and like I said, it made me angry at first reading it because there was people that I know really well that were reacting to it in the wrong way. And the reason that it was the wrong way is because the article's incomplete, it's misinformed, it's miseducating people about what's going on, and it's creating fear in people who up until now were doing absolutely fine, right? There was nothing wrong with what they were doing. And if you find the article and read it, uh, maybe you've already read it perhaps, um, but anything anything with death in the title is typically a good reason to just stay away from that article, right? Um, when I first clapped eyes on it, I wasn't interested in reading it at all, but because I saw people in my, close, my closest customers and network reading it, I felt like I had to read it and I also felt compelled to have a response to it as well. Uh, after reading it a couple of times and really digging into it and then responding to each part of it, I felt like it feels like the article is like off the cuff, kind of irrational, um, not really thought through, and I feel like it was reasonably irresponsible for such a popular blog to write something like this. And I sat on it for a few weeks, I've been on holiday, etc. I'm not angry about it, I mean, I didn't lose any sleep over it or anything like that. And this this is the podcast episode, it certainly isn't a rant about it as well, because I, I don't know about you, but every time someone says, I had a rant on this podcast episode, I just, I don't even, I mean, I'm ready to switch off already. I don't want to hear people ranting. I want people to come to me with some kind of level of thought, rational thought. Uh, and I think that's what this essay, this uh, social media examiner article really is. Actually, it's a bit of a rant. A rant. Therefore, it's kind of incomplete and a, and a little bit sort of just I don't know, just just rubbish and basic actually. Um, so my main concern though is not to have a dig at uh, social media examiner for publishing this article, but to kind of turn it around a little bit. And this is really for the people that have read it and need help to understand what's going on and what's actually happening, and to kind of dial down the, that level of fear mongering that's happening there. And to give people who have been getting great results from Google search and organic traffic the, the confidence to sort of continue on that path. So this isn't a dig, it's not a rant, it's not really an angry response either. It's just like, let's get some, some things clear here. And also, it's for the CMA community, right? Because, I mean, it's part of what we teach. I mean, this is like one person's opinion against another person's opinion. That's what I don't want this to be. And this is really for my community, my audience as well, who are perhaps read this article and then started to question everything they've learned and question their marketing strategies and their tactics based on what they've read there. And I'm kind of just here to kind of like add some balance to this um, to smooth things out. And the, the, the truth is is that you don't really have anything to worry about if you're doing the, the right things in the right ways. And when I say, I know it's difficult for someone to say if you're doing things in the right way because there's many, many things to do. But I'll, I'll, I think that'll come clear. In fact, for those, if you've listened to the podcast before, it'll be very clear to you what the right things are. Um, if you've not listened to the podcast before and this is your first experience with the podcast, then I will explain and give you an idea of what I believe to be the right things and wh- why, I, why I'm saying it in that way. Like, I know there's a million and one ways to market and grow a business, you know. I know there's loads of different things you could be doing. So there's no one right or wrong way. It's just that... Sometimes there is, though, a better way. And I believe this is what we teach at CMA, is the better way. Um, so, but before I continue, if whatever you're doing right now is working for you and it's getting results for you and your company and your brand, what I say or what anybody else says should not discourage you from doing what you're currently doing. Okay, use your head, use your reason, use your rationality 
don't make quick judgments. It might seem like marketing is moving and changing really fast, but when you look at the big picture, it's not changing as fast or as quickly as you think. It's definitely not changing in the moment you read a blog article. And with reference to this blog article, nothing changed the moment this blog article was published. The stuff that this in this article has been around for a while. The changes, generally speaking, the sort of the theory behind the changes or the the principle behind the, behind the changes that that uh, Google's put in place on their search results pages, has been happening for years, right? And that's where we need to start this conversation off. We need to, first of all, understand how Google works with content marketing, right? So let's start there. Let's start with Google. How would you define Google's job, right? How would a five-year-old describe what Google is? It's the answer to everything. I type something in and I get the answer. Google's job is to return to you the best answer based on your search term. If Google wasn't good at it, what would you do, right? As a consumer, if Google wasn't serving you first, you would go somewhere else. So it's not just in the best interest of Google to be the best at returning to you the best answer to your question or the best search results based on your search term, but it's crucial crucial that it continues to deliver at that level, continue to predict consumer behavior, continue to challenge its own business model to give you what you want. And what you want is you want it quickly, you want it easily. People have been using Google for decades, they know how to use it, they know how to find what they're looking for, okay? And as, as, as consumer behavior continues to change, there will continue to be changes in Google's platform, right? We can be absolutely certain of that. The other thing we can be certain of is, is we cannot control what Google does, right? So we have to manage what we can control, what we influence, what we can't control. Search isn't going anywhere either, right? This is what I was saying at the start is that as soon as you see something that has death in the title of it, you can be, you can be, you can rest assured that this thing that they're talking about is not dying, right? It's just a complete, uh, it's just, uh, right, there's like almost, you wouldn't read something that has death in the title. It's going to be bullshit probably. So search isn't going anywhere. It's not dying. And in fact, if you do the right things, I feel like it's thriving. Um, yep. Okay. In the future, there might be more developments with AI. In fact, there definitely will be more developments with AI and filters and things like that where you've got assistants doing all your work for you and predicting what you'll find, want to look for. But there's probably still going to be search. You're probably still going to want to search for stuff. But no one can predict the future uh, accurately. But what we know right now is that Google search isn't dying um, and it is changing as it should. It ha- it's not only that, that, that we, we can't fight Google and it's changes. It's going to change. It needs to change. It should change and adapt, and we have to change and adapt with it too. If anything, Google's changes reflects changing consumer behavior, and therefore, if we are smart and we're using our brain and we're thinking rationally, we should be going, Google's changing. Why? How do I change as a result? What do I need to do differently? What does our company, our brand need to do differently to make sure that we are aligning with the trends in consumer behavior? It's all over Google's blog. All the data, all the information is there. We cannot ignore it. We cannot fight it. We cannot pretend that it doesn't exist, okay? Things will get more difficult. That is a definite, right? Things are going to get more difficult as more as Google makes these changes, it, it, it does make us, it makes it more difficult for us to be found. It makes it more difficult for people to click through to our website. These things all happen. An increase in content makes it more, more competitive in our industry, right? But does this mean that we should give up hope? Absolutely not. It's a defeatist attitude, right? If you're going into something and saying, ah, what's the point? It's too difficult, right? You may as well give up it now if that's your attitudes. You may as well just stop what you're doing. The game is over for you. But the game is not over for everybody else, right? It's far from it. There is still a lot of room for better in the marketplace, especially in the content marketing space. Google is still seeking and is thirsty to find and display the single best answer that exists for the questions and the problems that your buyers are searching for the answers for, right? Your buyers are asking these questions. Google wants to give them the answers. You can, you have the ability to create the single best answer that exists online for that question or that problem, right? 
and in some ways as I as I've been going through this article and trying to sort of piece together my response to get some more clarity on this and it's in some ways it's it's kind of like not a surprise to me that it's a social marketing website that has put this together because in my experience social media companies are the ones that struggle the most with content marketing and um, this article clearly has a complete misunderstanding of what content marketing truly is and the one major reason that most companies and brands and people, marketers, whatever, the biggest reason that they disregard organic search is simply because they've never had any significant results from organic search. So um, all with all that in mind, let's get into the article, right? And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up on some of the major points in the article and then I'm going to explain what's actually happening and discuss how this affects you as a marketer and a business owner and what you can do about it. The answer, the, the article's um, got some good points in it as well, which I'll cover at the end. Um, so let's look at the, the first part of the article. If you're also, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it and you are, um, you, you're also looking at the article, then that would be, that would be a perfect scenario. But I appreciate that when you're listening to a podcast, you're mostly doing something else. Um, you're listening passively while you're driving or doing something else, but it might be worth revisiting this so you can see how I've worked through the article and the points I'm picking up, right? So the first point is the, is the point in the article is talking about how we're moving towards having, that the, the consumers are moving towards wanting only the single best answer that exists online. And this is really fueled from voice assistants, right? I've covered this in the podcast probably 18 months ago or so and how voice assistants are nothing to worry about at all. Um, and they still aren't anything to worry about at all. And I'll explain why. In the article... Um, they use a question to illustrate how Google's job is to return only one single answer. And the question they use to prove this point is, what is the capital of California? And then to illustrate that point further, they use another short tail search term, which they are in position one or in the top two or three positions for, which is this, the short tail search term, which is social media, right? Two words. And then the article goes on to showcase that their website is really far down the page due to new search features, which we've talked about on the podcast before, that deliver a specific answer to that, right? It could be like a dictionary or a Wikipedia or something like that. And then out of the 1.43 million searches for that term in the last 90 days, only 1% clicked through to the Social Media Examiner's website, okay? So let's wrap all of that up, right, quickly. We have to stop for a moment and kind of unpack this, right? If you've been following the CMA podcast for a while and you've been working with CMA, perhaps you're in the, the membership or you've worked with us with as a client, you know that we're just simply not concerned with with short tail searches like social media or the equivalent of that in our industry. Um, we know that our buyers, um, when they're in the buying journey, aren't really searching around short tail phrases. They're really concerned with very specific, highly specific answers to questions, solutions to problems, right? So for me, this kind of like debunks the whole experiment, right? If you pick a question that has only one answer, what is the capital of California? <laughs> There's a terrible example to showcase and illustrate the point because there is only one answer to that question. This is exactly the experiment that I did in a podcast a while back, which I will link to in the show notes, which is about voice search and why you don't need to be concerned about it because your buyers are not asking their voice assistant to compare and, rev and for reviews and for to understand pricing and to understand problems and in industries that happen around certain products and services, right? That's just not happening, right? We use voice assistants to get single answers to things. How many times have the San Francisco Giants won the, won the World Series? You know, stuff like that. What is the capital of, right? So these, this debunks the whole experiment. Right, experiment with yourself. Get a voice assistant, start asking it questions, and you'll see how quickly it starts to tap out. In other words, you're not getting the information that you want anymore, and you do have to go to search to find the answers, right? And that's just that's just where we are right now with voice search. It's where we are with single answers as well. In most cases, for people asking questions that are in the buyer's journey, there is no single there is no single answer to the question. There's many different answers and variations of that question even, right? 
So experiment with yourself, have a look at it. There's nothing to worry about here. This has been going on for quite a while. And like I said at the start, Google's job is to return to you the single best answer based on your search term, right? Google's job isn't to give you a million answers, although it does. You're never going to search, you're never going to go through all of them. We want to find what we're looking for very quickly and easily. And if we can't find what we're looking for quickly and easily, we're back up to the top. We're we're putting our search term back into the we put our search term back into the box and we're researching, right? We're not going to page two. It's not what we do, right? So our mission as content marketers, as business people, as communicators is to create the single best piece of content that exists online today that addresses that question that your buyers have in the best way. If you're doing that already, then you truly have nothing to worry about because as time moves on, as the changes happen and Google's job is to return to you, that return to the user the best answer that exists, if you're really challenging yourself and pushing yourself to address in the best way, then you're going to be at the top. You're going to be that one answer that's what you should be pushing for, right? That's what you need to do. And if you really want to, if you've not been doing this and you want to understand how to do this, head over to our website. Go to cmauk.co.uk, cmauk.co.uk, download my ebook and checklist and tutorial, video tutorial. It takes you through exactly how to create this best content that exists online today for your industry. And that'll get you started off on the right foot. So in conclusion to this point, the examples that they've used to illustrate the point are bad examples, right? They don't under, they don't illustrate the true the, the true meaning of what's happening with Google search and how our buyers are using Google because these terms are not what buyers would use to search Google, right? That's just that debu- it debunks the whole test for me, right? Anything else beyond that is like void. Right, so it's clear to me that the person that's writing this article doesn't understand what content marketing is and how it works for brands and companies. Right, that's clear to me at this point. And so, because the examples are terrible, the article has really has no grounding from that point forward. But we have to continue. So let's go on to. I've got two more points I want to make on this, and then we'll wrap things up with some ideas about how to move forward. But also. A lot of the ideas that I'm sharing in here are things that are just inherent in the podcast. If you go back through the last 30 or 40 or 50 episodes, you're going to get all of this. So point number two is over half of Google searches do not result in a click. Again, this is true. I think it's something like 61% of Google searches do not result in a click through to a website. Um, So let's just go with the rule of thumb. Let's just say it's more than half, right? This is not new information. Again, Google's job is to return to you the single best answer that exists online based on your search term. And if you can't find what you're looking for at top of page one, you're going to change your search. You're going to be going through this process. People have been using Google for, for years, decades. They want to find the answer quickly. And Google have introduced or have been introducing lots of features or testing and trying different things all the time to give you the answer as quickly as possible and some of these features mean that people are not going to click through to your website okay now these features like the snippet boxes and the knowledge bases and just there's loads of loads of them as is pushing the organic searches down Okay, so your position one can be below the fold, very, like, far below the fold, sometimes on page four or five if you're on on a mobile device. Um, sorry, screen four or five if you're on a mobile device. Um, but there's there's two ways to look at this. You can either look at this as a threat or you can look at this as an opportunity. And if you are striving to create the single best answer that exists online for the questions and problems that your buyers are searching for, then you're you're going to be in the best position possible, right? But if you're not, then you're going to struggle. Um, because the opportunity here is, is that your company, your brand could be all over page one. It doesn't have... To, so it's not just about being in position one organically. There's lots of other opportunities on the search engine results page for you to take advantage of now. So to me, it's like, wow, I can be in five places instead of just one now. That's amazing. Let's get on with creating the single best article that exists online today for that question, that problem. Let's do that and let's take advantage of all of these opportunities that exist on the search results pages. I think that's what how we need to look at this. Google are going to be introducing features. They're going to take features away. They're going to be trying different things all the time, right? We can't control what Google do. We just have to go with it, okay? So you either fight it and drag your heels or you lean into it, you go with it. Now, the concluding points in the article... Is I feel like this article is based on, like the 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 whole experiment is based on search traffic or 
volume traffic um, to, to a website, right? So total volume of traffic to a website. That's really what it feels like. So it draws two conclu- three conclusions, sorry. And I think I'm just going to check the article quickly as well because I'm pretty sure it says at the start that he says that I would begin now some detailed analysis. <laughs> this is this is not really detailed, I would say, because there's like a causal link, or there's like a and not it's not it's not causal. It's like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just it's just an assumed link between uh, the the decline in traffic also results in a decline in customers, which is simply not true, right? Um, you would have to have hard data to prove that. So the three conclusion points in the article is number one, there's going to be a continuing decline in traffic. Search traffic continues to decline as Google takes the top slots, top slots for search queries. Number two, fewer people to nurture, fewer people reading your content are going to be is going to result in fewer people sharing it, and fewer people opting in for your free email offers. And number three, fewer customers. Revenue declines as your owned audiences shrink. <laughs> fewer website visitors and email subscribers means fewer people to promote your products and services too. This is just like garbage, basically. It's just simply not true. Uh, as I said at the start, like the the reason that people re- disregard organic organic search is because they're not getting the results that they want from organic search. So they see your threat, a change in Google, and they automatically like they they pull back from it, right? So it's like a threat. They feel defeated before they're even started. So, yep, yeah, search traffic will probably decline to your website and blog, but that doesn't mean you'll have fewer customers. This gives us the challenge now is can we be better? Can we do it better now? Um, there's not a direct link between lower traffic and then getting fewer customers. In fact, what we're seeing is the exact opposite. It's not even fewer customers. We're getting customers. A lot of, our, a lot of the people in CMA and the people we work with are getting higher value customers from their content. In other words, more customers paying more, staying for longer, better quality, right? It's like the exact opposite of what I'm reading in this article. So, but as as Google changes, there are going to be new features. We are going to have to be aware of them. However, there's a kind of like an underlying foundational principle here is that if you can lead with, lead your content strategy with a mission statement, which is that we're going to, as as far as reasonably possible, we're going to put our energy into creating the single best article that exists online that addresses the, this question, this problem, whatever it might be, then I feel like you're going to be going in the right direction. You're sort of leaning into the same principle as the uh, as what your consumers are looking for. It's what Google is then trying to deliver to your, your buyers as well. So let's that's that's where I just feel like if we can just take that, if we take one thing from this podcast episode, is that one liner, right? That one thing that, that if we do that and if we're striving for that, I feel like all the other all the other challenges kind of like slip away and become less of a problem and much more of an opportunity for you. So in the main, so I've got like four or five wrap up points here as well. The major reasons that people struggle to get results from organic search, and there's tons of them, obviously hundreds. But the, the the majors are that they're 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 not really focusing on the right search terms, right? They're searching on short tail stuff like social media, for example. So they aren't thinking about the search terms that their buyers are searching for when they need to make an educated buying decision. Now, if you truly want to get ROI, in other words, you know, return on your content marketing efforts, then you will have to focus on creating content that pulls your buyers through the buying process to help them make an educated decision. This is this is content marketing. This is not what's being discussed in the article. Um, people, companies, brands, marketers don't view content as a sales strategy. Their marketing is not aligned with sales. Another major failing and why people are not getting results from organic search or from their content marketing. Um, They're creating content for their peers instead of focusing on their buyers and their content isn't addressing questions and problems in the best way. In other words, they're not really focused on creating the best content that exists online today. They're just creating basic content. And that's not good enough. It's just simply not good not good enough. People aren't waiting for another mediocre blog article or video, right? We need to create the best 
within our whatever's within our control and that's all we can control right we all we can control is the quality of the work that we do the results that we get from the work is not up to us we can influence it by doing certain things making our titles right and our tags and our urls and all the on-page seo and all the the technical seo we can get all of that right but what google does with all of that is is not it's not up to us right we can't control that the article finishes up with a few solid ideas which I feel like are worth taking into consideration about conversion rates and optimizing conversions on page and making sure that the traffic that you are getting is being converted in the right ways. Um, it also mentions that SEO alone isn't going to grow their business. I feel like that's absolutely true as well. There's not going to be just one thing that's going to help this, but certainly if you want to uh, be found in Google and you want to get better results from organic traffic then seo is a major major factor um but i'm going to just finish up with some ideas to help you move forward right so we've discussed the article we draw a line under that like i said it's not about rant it's not about getting angry it's just about i wanted to bring uh, some kind of balance to this article so that it didn't just so the comments were frightening in this article people just were almost abandoning seo completely which is like in like insane so we don't want to get to this, this like frantic, this frantic uh, motion in marketing uh, that that infuriates me as a marketer. It's like the one one of the things that really that I really hate about the industry is that people are just jumping from one thing to the next without really learning it properly, without really getting the gist of it, and it's inf- it is infuriating. So let's look at some changes you can make to develop this, and we'll wrap things up. Number one, see content marketing as a sales strategy. Number two, make it your mission to create the content that is the best in your industry, that addresses the questions and problems better than anybody else. Set the, the, the on-page uh, search and result page features are going to be reducing traffic to your website, but that builds the case even more for having the single best answer that exists online, leaning directly into what changes Google will be making and what's around the corner with regards to voice and that single best answer. In other words, see it as an opportunity. You can be in many different places on the search engine result page. You might not be getting the clicks, but you're getting the exposure. What I mean, take it as an opportunity. Think about the natural line of question that your buyers have, right? So if they're on your website, they're searching for a question, think about what the next question might be. In other words, imagine they've gone back to Google to research the next question. What what would keep them on your website? What's the natural line of questioning? Get really concerned with longer tail search terms, not what's included in these articles as an example, right? The very highly specific questions that your buyers are asking through the buying journey. Focus what's in your control, first of all, the quality of the work that you can do in the research. Secondly, focus on what you can influence, right? You can do certain things that influences the results that you, you get, but do not give energy to what you cannot control. You can't control what Google does. You just have to go with it, right? You just have to work with it. And just because something is getting harder doesn't mean that it's dying. In fact, if you do the right things, I think I think there's a lot of room for you to thrive in that organic Google search space. Just because it's getting harder doesn't mean it's dying. If it's getting harder, it's challenging us to be better. Now, I've linked to relevant podcasts for you to listen to. You can also download our guide to creating the best content in your industry. Just go to cmauk.co.uk. Go ahead and download that tutorial and that checklist and ebook. I think you'll love it. And I've also linked to the article from the Social Media Examiner as well. So you can go have a look at that and um, dive into some of the relevant content and podcasts that we've put into the show notes as well. As always, keen to know your thoughts, what's on your mind, any questions that you have as well. You can email me, chris at cmauk.co.uk or you can tweet me at chrismar101 and I will catch you next time. Don't forget to be awesome.